Happy holidays, everybody. I'm sorry I didn't get a chance to really say it on the Beastars review. I had lost track of the dates, but I want to say it again here. Happy holidays, no matter what your faith, and Happy New Year to everybody. Come up with a um, scientific or a, a, a logical way of doing this review. Unfortunately, it doesn't really work today. Today's show is a show unlike any other. Today's show is a show that, yet again, is what I am starting to call Deconstruction Disney. Deconstruction Disney is where they take very familiar Disney properties and turn them into anime. I find it weird that I'm doing two Disney cartoons basically back to back with Pandora's Heart being a couple weeks ago and now this show where instead of Alice in Wonderland we are instead going to go deep in into the world of Peter Pan but not So, hello everybody, welcome to Anime Guardian, I am your host Jay, and today, The Promised Neverland. The Promised Neverland is about a home, a home of orphanage, full of young orphans who seem to get along well, they have their friends, they have their family, and they all see to each other pretty much as siblings and look out for each other for the most part. But soon you realize that these guys have some weird tattoos on their necks with numbers. A super hard testament to test the human's mind and ability. And then you find out that one of the siblings gets adopted. And as you look around you realize she does not have a toy with her. So she, what she do? We find out not only is she not getting adopted, but in all actuality she is dead. And served as alien food. As it turns out, what they are actually are human farms. They are in a human farm. They are to be slaughtered like animals, like you would a cow, and fed to a different populace. Normally I avoid spoilers, but considering this all happens within the first episode or two, I don't really count it as a spoiler. Ray is an enigma of a character. You like him in the beginning, and as you move forward, your emotions quickly change with the character. Because on one time, you don't know if he's good, or in another instance, he could be very bad, but he's been working this way differently to work, escaping all along. It, it boggles the mind, really. Emma, well, as the show continuously likes to point out, is reckless, not very educated, but very very honest and because of that she's able to take the leader role into the story at first i was like okay this show is gonna be cute it's a it's a cute show the, it's adorable i've got it about two episodes two episodes later i'm like what the hey guys i really want you guys to put down in the comments what you guys want me to review next. Your opinion matters to me, and as such, I would love to hear what you guys would like to see as a full-on review. Norman is the other character. Norman's a unique, very intelligent, very 
quick witting young lad who I really wish we got to see a little bit more into his psyche if I'm being honest. We didn't really get a chance to know him like we did Ray and Emma and to me that seemed like a big letdown. This show was done by Studio Clockwork who in the past have done great shows such as for example a show from a couple of years ago known as Darling the Franks and for you big fans of Shonen it's also known for a little show called Fairy Tale. And because of both of these shows and who what they are and how much I personally like them, that gives, you know, Clockworks sort of a um expectation of quality. And because of that it it's very easy to trust some of their work. I haven't I don't have any issues with the animation whatsoever in this anime. It's paced great, the acting's great, the voice actors are great, and speaking of the voice actors now, I'm not going to get into spoilers here because I feel like giving you spoilers would ruin any opportunities of you actually watching the show. And I'd rather you guys just skip the video right now and watch the show because it is incredibly worth your time. The soundtrack was done by the composer Takahiro Obada. And again, I'm sorry if I butchered that name, but your music was absolutely incredible. I could not stop listening to it both while I was watching the show and when I wasn't watching the show. I downloaded it and listened to the whole OST and it could not get any better. The only complaint that I do have is when it comes to the opening and the endings. Well, what do I mean by that? Well, the first OP and ED were absolutely fantastic. I love the OP of the show. It was absolutely fantastic and so was the ED. However, having said that, I felt like the second ED in the halfway point was not nearly as good as the first ED. Was it a good song? Yes. I still listen to this one as well, but it was not nearly as good as the first ED. On top of that, the animation of the ED is boring. It is nothing more than simple background photos, and that to me is just you could have done so much more with that than what you decided to do. Now, normally how I do this is I'll watch the whole series in sub and then the whole series in dub. Now, with Netflix being the, the one where you can stream to this, and I'll get to that here in a little bit, the dub doesn't is, is not expected to be bad. So I did something a little different. Halfway through the show, I took off subs and I put back. I put it on dub, and I watched two episodes of that. And I can tell you that although I did go back to sub, I did go back to the original Japanese. The dub was still very, very good. I was very impressed, even for it being Netflix. The sh the one major flaw I have with the show, I really shouldn't count it, but I'm going to. And that is the fact that it has a season 2 ending. As I stated in my Beastars review, a very famous YouTuber says the ending is paramount. And for me, I guide that no matter what I do. And because of that, having a read the manga ending or a season 2 ending does not work for me. Yes, there's a season 2 on its way. In fact, it's coming here later on in 2021. But having said that, we really, we didn't know for sure if that was going to be the case. It needs a season two. It needs an ending to the story. So after reviewing all the necessary criteria, I finally reward The Promised Neverland Season 1 with an overall recommendation to stream it rather than buy. As far as it goes, it's a great show, but ending is what really makes it go down as it was given for a series that wasn't guaranteed. For ultimate anime recommendations, I first point you to Pandora's Hearts. There's a review on my channel if you want to check that out as well. It's a good show. Give it a try. And the other one... We'll put... You know, we'll put Dead Man Wonderland here. Mainly because of the fact that it's a show about a group of people who are locked in a cage of some kind that they are trying to escape. Between both those, you should find, hopefully one of them to your liking. So that's it for me. Thank you guys. If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. And since you're going there anyway, hit the subscribe button. That way you can be known 
of my next uploads. You want to really be notified of my next uploads? Then all you have to do is click the bell right here and get notified. That's it, everybody. Thank you. My name is Jay. This has been Anime Guardian, and I'll see you guys in the next review.